guys, I'm back here with you on the Mustang. Um, yeah, I'm going to show you what's going on here. So, we're going to fit this piece in next. You remember in my last video when we were talking about the Mustang, I showed you I had this piece tacked in down below your frame rail connector. Or just your frame rail, sorry, your frame rail, your subframe rail. So this piece slides into that. And then there is this top piece that comes with it. It slides up underneath that, just like that one does over there, factory. And then your frame slides in to, in that area, into your rad support. The issue we have here is if you, I don't know if you can see it in this video, but if you see, if you can see the two months, you can see that one is further ahead by at least a half an inch to an inch compared to that one. The reason is, is see our gap here? There's our gap all the way here. That's supposed to fit in there tight. It does not fit in there tight because where they bend the frame to butt up to the floor, it is bent further back than this is. So it's never going to go in there because of these pieces. So it's not this lets us slip it in and away we go. And this is why I didn't just cut the whole front end off and take the rad support out and all that. I wanted to do just one piece at a time because this is factory, this is not factory. So it's showing me what's going on here. And it has absolutely nothing to do with the floor because the floor pan I replaced, I originally put the floor pan in to the inner fender, the factory inner fender that was there when I did the floor pan. So the issue is, now, I, now I did show you I'd welded a piece in there over here where it had been rotten that I did um, while this was out. But the whole lower pan I had replaced way back in other videos that this mounts to also, and it was attached to this piece because I drilled out the spot welds. So what's the solution to this? The solution is, if we can get down here and see, see how tight we are? But yet, yeah, look at our gap, look at that. Woo. So the solution is to me, is what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna splice this, I'm gonna do a cut here, I'm gonna do a cut down here, and I'm gonna straighten this out, and I'm going to then, like I'm going to, how do I explain this? I'm going to take this piece and hammer it straight. And I'm going to cut it here, and cut it here, and I'm going to bend it back further. So this lip, instead of just being, what is that, maybe half an inch onto the floor pan, is now going to become, like, more like an inch. Because it's the only solution I got. If I bend that back here, and cut it back, and bend that back, that's going to allow that to move more forward, which is going to close in all this gap that you see going on here. At least that's what we're going to attempt. So remember, nothing this goes on as simple as it appears to be but with that being said that is the only issue I've got and once I address that this is gonna slide right in there and I think we're gonna be pretty good I think it's gonna be pretty damn good so uh, I think this was CJ pony parts or something like that pretty good job no 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 I'm, I'm not complaining whatsoever about that I'm just showing people that nothing is as easy as they think it is so I'll slip this out try and cut that back and we'll see if we can get this gap fixed up Okay guys, I'm back here. If you can remember, we had quite a big gap back in there. Remember I could fit my hand, my whole fingers went in between there. I've closed it up. I've closed it up all nicely down in there. You can just barely see a little bit of daylight and that's where I'll just tap up the, the you know, the, um, the bent over piece there. Um, I put a couple tacks here and there just to see where everything is. I got my level. I've been checking my measurements. You know, I've got measurements written down there on the frame. I got them all across here. so. We'll, uh, you know, we, we checked all them out. We got measurements written on the rad support. God, I got them written everywhere. <laughs> you can barely see them. I even got them written on here. I even went to the to the to the point of taking measurements because if you can see, the hood has the nuts are like installed, welded in factory on on the inner fender. So when I before I even took it off, I wrote a measurement down here. I mean, my scribbling, but I know what it means. Ten and a half hinge. And what I did was from the very top bolt, which we can see right here, or my, oops, sorry, where my finger is, this top bolt, I went from the center of that to the edge of this, and it's 10 and a half inches. And I double check it again, because I can double check it from that one to the top, and it's 10 and a half inches. So I knew this quarter had to slide back to it was 10 and a half. Then, you know, you get measurements from, I take measurements from, you know, the mount, which is, of course, I'm pointing to the old one, I haven't cut off, but I would take a measurement from there to the rad support because I'm not moving the rad support when I took this fender off. I got measurements there and of course you know I made sure they were right so and then I took 
measurements this way going across all right and then like I said I took measurements of the outer piece here to there now granted keep in mind sometimes you may put something in and the measurement may seem a teeny bit wider and narrower and you might be like what the hell what the hell playing around with stuff but then take your new part and measure up here because sometimes these new parts are not the same width across here as your existing old one and minus the difference and there's where you might be finding your issue which means you probably got it in the right spot it's just that part's either a little narrower or a little wider like everything is nothing is ever exactly like perfect um, but these parts here I'm very happy with I didn't have any problems with uh, except for back in there and, and like I say now I've got it closed up and it's turning out good so it's there's a lot of welding here we've got to get a lot here welded on but anyway that's where I'm at right now and that's what's going on so I'm just going to go over I'm going to triple check all my measurements one more time because I've only got around five tacks on this thing I'm going to triple check them before I get carried away and of course I did bring the fender in and I set the fender on and it was lining up beautiful to all the holes and the gap on the door and the gap against the cowl up in here right up in here all this it was lining up it was lining up with the bolts here which you know the, your, your slide clips which it was giving me room to movement there so everything was working out good along here now what I want to do next you can see I got the hood hinges there yes believe it or not I like to get a few more tacks on here on this piece to make it more solid and I like to install the hood hinges and just set the hood down on here because a hood is always a good starting point when you're putting fenders on in my opinion so that's where we're at so we'll uh, we'll continue on and I'll show you when I get a bit more welded on. Okay guys, I'll show you where I've gone here next on the uh, Mustang with putting the front end in. So I've spot welded, or plug welded I should say, the frame rail that runs underneath here. You remember I had shown you a long time ago when I was putting the floors and I had drilled all the holes, I had left it, I lined it up just like I'd done over there, see? I never did weld it in place, I just set it there for a couple tacks because I didn't know, I wanted to be sure that it was going to line up again with my front inner fender we were putting on. So now that everything is lining up, I've got the little plug welded in, remember I fixed that hole up in there in the floor I showed you a while back. So we'll see if we can show you this underneath, this might kind of suck a bit. So there's the piece I'm talking about. Now what I do, I know that some of you fanatics are going to knock it. So factory, there's spot welder. And them spot welds you saw on the other side, see how they're coming through under here? That's how you know you got penetration. You can see it where it comes. It's hard for me to film here where it's coming through. But what I also did is I went underneath here and did like a couple welds along here. And now what I'll do is when I get the car up on the hoist properly, I'll grind these down. And then I'm going to seam seal all here. But factory, it would never have been welded here. It was only just spot welded from the inside down onto this lip. I've put some extra welds just because I want to make sure it's good and secure. I don't think there's anything wrong ever with throwing a little extra weld onto something. And like I say, I'm going to tidy that up. I'm going to tidy that up and clean it up. So now, the reason, like I say, oh, let me turn this music down here. Hang on a second here. We got a little David Allen Co. going on today. So. The reason, like I said from day one, is there's that rail right there. I never did put it in 100%. I just done a couple tacks to hold it in place because this slides into it. And I was worried if something was off or not lining up right, it could be because of that. So this is why I tell you, don't ever get into a panic when you're doing things. So now that's on there. It's done. It's finished. It's on there. And obviously this welds into that, right? And then it welds this panel, welds to your firewall, and welds to your rad support. It goes on and on. And you got your torque box, it's got to go in here that welds to. But anyway, what I'm going to do is I've measured this, I don't know how many times. But now I've got that piece in, I'm going to measure one more time. All my points, I'm going to measure from here to there, and there to there, and there to there, and everything. And I'm going to make sure everything is in place. I even, which is a good thing I forgot to mention to you yesterday, there's your cross member. Your cross member bolts right, roughly right up in here, and it goes to side to side. I forgot to mention to you, uh, not yesterday, I mean, like, earlier on in this video, that bolt that in because it's got to go from that side to this side and it bolts onto this new piece. So that way there you know this new piece is not too far out because it's got to bolt on. So there's another way of doing things. So anyway, I'm going to continue on here welding and uh, plugging away, but I just wanted to show you that this is now all in there good and solid. And now I'm going to work on this whole piece here. 
before I get involved in the torque box. I don't actually think I'm going to get involved in the torque box anyway until I get this piece out. Only reason is I can get in here a little better and behind here and shit like that with the torque box out of the way. So I'm going to get this on welded on solid. Then we're going to deal with that whole shit show. Then we're going to deal with the torque box. Then I'm going to come on to the rad support. You're not going to see all that on this video, but that's where I'm going to go. All right. Okay, so here's what's next. I've um, remeasured everything and I've grabbed the fender and I've set it up on here. You can see it's lining up pretty good. Now, of course, you're seeing a bigger gap here, but that's only because if I actually, if I should push the fender in and see now, look how nice that closes up. Isn't that beautiful? Looks awesome. It's all lining up all the way through here. Except for right here, you can see it's sticking out and the only reason is it's sticking out is because it's hitting my jack stand. So, even this is going to go up in there. This will go back further when I move it back, but it's working. So now what we're going to do is we're going to pull that fender off and we're going to completely weld in that inner piece wherever it needs to be. So that's the next big step. Okay guys, well we're going to end this video with this welding in place. So, I've welded it all the way down here. Now normally you would have drilled through here and plug welded it on, it would have been factory spot welded on. I welded it solid. Um, I just want to know what's on there. It's on there good. And like I say, I'm going to put some primer on here and then I'm going to um, seam seal just along the edge here. Later on, not right now, we got to get body work done and stuff like that, but that's all done. So I want to make sure it's solid. It's welded down in there where it should be. Um, it's welded across on the rail here. Obviously I didn't go any further there because the torque box has got to go in. Oh, we'll get up here. I've, uh, you can't really see it, but I've welded it down along in there you know it's it's fitting tight if you remember at the beginning of this video we had a gap now we've got a nice line like we should have um, factory if you can see can't really see here it's pretty dirty they just do an old uh, weld across there so I I did a weld across oops, sorry guys I did a weld across there too then I did a teeny one on the front and then I actually did a little one here on the side it just doesn't, you know, these cars to me were very flimsy built and it doesn't hurt to have a couple extra welds on. So that's it. Now, as far as the rad support goes, this normally would have came all the way over here and slipped over top of this, like much on this side. See how this comes along and it's got a tab and then this is actually the, the piece I cut off. This is your rad support. Well, I had cut that hunk off the rad support. So normally the rad support would come here and slip over this. And obviously, you know, it, it welds up and across here. I had just done a tack, which I'm going to cut away because the rad support's going to be replaced. So that holds everything there in. But that's it. That's where we're going to leave this video. We're going to leave it there with the inner fender on there. And um, we'll see where we go next. So hopefully there was some tips there you picked up on uh, on this video. If there wasn't, there wasn't. If there was, there was. This is the way I did it. It seems to be working out. It's turning out good for me. I tried the fender on there. Um, I made sure all my measurements were good. I checked. I kept checking the measurements and everything is lining up perfect. So we must have done something right. Okay, remember, it's always a good time at all time. We'll see you next time.